we gather together this morning to worship and to praise God as we hear the sermon for the week. Um, God is at work in our lives. God is speaking to us. The theme for today is redeem the time for the days are evil. Redeem the time for the days are evil. We have heard the readings and I will anchor on two verses. Psalm 11 verse 10 that says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom will be my anchor verse and Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. Redeem the time because the days are evil. To some, wisdom comes at a very early stage of life. Right where we start, when we start our journeys. But to some others, it comes in midlife. Somewhere in the middle of the journey, we receive it. And we are able to redeem the time. And spend the last part of our years very well. While for others, wisdom comes way too late or it never arrives. Last week, 83-year-old Joe Ligon, the oldest and the longest seven juvenile, was finally released after spending 68 years behind bars in Philadelphia. He was incarcerated at 15 and spent 68 years of his life inside and came out at 83. He was given a life sentence in February 1953 for robbery and for stepping with four other teenage boys. You talk of redeeming time this morning? Ligon says, I am not a kid anymore. I'm a grown man. I'm an old man and getting old, older every day. I wish this, I, I close court. I wish this was revealed to him earlier on in his life than at age 83. Mm -hmm. He is spending the last years of his life in freedom, both literally and metaphorically. Mm -hmm. Right at the beginning, the young Solomon realizes that he has a choice to take over from his dad, who was a great king, David, who messes up at the beginning of his career. And Solomon has a choice either to mess up or to begin by asking for wisdom before he does the same mistakes that his dad committed. So instead of asking for wealth, no fame, but he asked for wisdom. And then the rest was added unto him. Who does not know that King David only got it right after messing up? But he learned his lessons and became the greatest king after God's own heart. And God blessed him with long years in power. Right at the start, Solomon realizes that he is just a kid and he needs help. I repeat, to some it is given right at the beginning, while it's the others it comes when they've wasted their years. Solomon says, I don't know what to do. I am young. God, show me the way. Give me wisdom before I mess up. Bless your heart, young man, because you can admit your inadequacy in a world that thinks that it is adequate, in a world that thinks it knows everything. What a prayer the young man shoots right at the beginning. He shoots the prayer right into heaven. He is sitting on a throne and remembers to shoot up a prayer to a God who is sitting on a throne. And he lifts up his hand, bows down, and he said, 
your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or to number. So give your servant discerning, a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For he who is able to govern this great people of yours, give me a discerning heart so that I am able to choose between right and wrong. God was not just surprised, but was shocked that there are still good-hearted people like this young man under the sun. And this is God's response. Since you have asked for wisdom and not for long life and wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked for. But I will give you a wise and a discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. In, idea, in other words, God is saying, you have asked for the right things. You could have asked for the wrong things, for power, for worth, or for the death of your enemies. So God is saying to young Solomon, moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for. I love that part. I will give you even that which he did not ask for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime, you have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and you keep my commandments, as David your father did, I'll give you long life. What an encounter with God. I always think of this encounter that Solomon had with God as the same kind of encounter that Moses had before journeying back to Egypt to lead the people of God out of Egypt into a promised land. He had this same encounter, life-changing encounter. My friends, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. We need people who are able to know the difference between right and wrong. You may think this is obvious, but we live in a generation of hot heads. A generation of people who know too much and pray little. A generation of people who do not want to be corrected. But this young Solomon says, I am a kid. I need help. I feel for Joe Ligon, who only realized it towards the end of his life, that he could have done it better. He could have exercised better judgment on the night the crime was committed. But why are we worried about Joe Ligon, who spent 68 years in an American jail, prison, instead of worrying about us here, who still have our lives before us, and we are given the opportunity to choose what we want to ask for from God. Why worry about Joe Ligon, who is saying, now I'm trying to redeem whatever time is left for me, because the rest of his life was spent in that jail. This is what Ligon says. He says, I didn't mess up with drugs whilst I was in prison. I didn't drink in jail. I did none of that crazy stuff that causes people to get killed in jail. I didn't try to escape. I didn't give nobody a hard time. I stayed as humble as I could. What prison has taught me along with many other things is to mind my own business to always try to do what is right and to stay away from trouble when it is humanly possible to do so. I wish this wisdom is, will be known by some of us who are outside prison to begin to understand that it's important to do the right things. 
It's important not to give others a hard time. This man learned it in prison, but we do not need to go to prison to learn this because the scriptures this morning are challenging us to seek wisdom and that the rest God will add it into our lives. So Paul writing to the church in Ephesians says, Therefore, do not be foolish, but always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. God, help us to redeem the time. You are the giver of all wisdom. We don't want to spend our days messing up. We don't want to spend our days giving other people hard time. What we just have to do is to keep the momentum because the end is near. And if we are not careful, we will spend the remainder of our years and days chasing after useless things and sitting in useless meetings and activities that are not life-giving, that are not nourishing our souls. We need to refuse we need to refuse to be used and to be abused and to play people's games. These are your people of God, Solomon says. I don't want to lead them just for the sake of leading them so that I'm consumed by their agendas. I want to do your will, O oh Lord. And God says, you are the man. You are not asking for honor, for wealth, for the longevity of life. But you just want to do the right thing. May God help us. Because we live in an evil generation. Let us redeem the time. Let us redeem the time. And my sisters, my brothers, the wisdom that I'm asking for myself is that I avoid the drama. Because there is too much toxic drama going around. But I refuse to be drawn into that. I need to focus. I need to redeem the time. As Psalm 90 verse 12 says, Teach me to number my days, that I may gain a heart of wisdom. Please, God, teach me to number them one by one, year by year so that I can gain a heart of wisdom. And at the end of my journey, I will give glory to you and to your name alone. To you, O oh God, my heart yields. You are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Amen. And blessings be to all of us. Amen.